three years ago, I made a video where I called out wire nuts for being difficult to use and generally unreliable. Now, of course, my favorite alternative was using Wago electrical connectors. They do have one downside. They are more expensive than wire nuts. So leave it to Harbor Freight to come up with their own version of these quick connectors that sell for about 20% less. But are they truly any good? Well, the only way to find out is to put them to a real series of tests. We're going to try everything. Pull-out test, electrical load test, and by the end of this video, we'll figure out which is the better connector. The Wago and Harbor Freight connectors come in the same three varieties, two, three, and five connector versions. They're both rated for solid and stranded wire. That makes them really versatile. Though both say they can work on stranded wire from 12 to 24 gauge, the Pittsburgh has an advantage. It can handle solid wire from 10 to 24 gauge, meaning it can take larger wire than the Wago. The Wagos have a significant size and weight advantage. I weighed each of the three versions of both brands, and the Wago comes in at about half of what the Pittsburgh does. When you look at these connectors side by side, that size advantage is really important on the Wago. That means you'll be able to fit more of them in a tight electrical box, and that does happen quite frequently. Here we've got 10 of each connector, and you can see it really is significant. One of the most important tests people request is the pull-out test. That's where we insert the wire into the connector, and we pull as hard as possible to see at what point will it break free. Unlike a normal scale, this one has a memory, so once that wire breaks free, it will record the maximum amount of force required to pull it out. Starting with our first test on the Wago, it took 22 kilograms of force, or 48 pounds, which would be the equivalent of about 8 gallons of milk hanging off that wire. Repeating that same test on the Wago, I got a similar 25 kilograms, or 55 pounds of braking force. My first test on the Pittsburgh achieved 27 kilograms of braking force, or 60 pounds. The second test was where things got really interesting. It took 48 kilograms of force, or 105 pounds, to break that wire free. This was so unusual, I decided to conduct a third test on the Pittsburgh, and it actually got an even better result at 60 kilograms of braking force, or 132 pounds. Taking the best result of each brand, the Pittsburgh achieved over twice the pullout strength required to remove the wire from the connector forcefully. Connectors will always add some level of resistance to a circuit, but the amount of resistance can be critically important, which is why this load test is really going to show which connector is doing a better job electrically. For this test, I'm going to use this top on thermal scanner, and this will measure the amount of heat coming off of each of the connectors. To measure it properly, I broke apart an extension cord with three individual wires. There will be a hot, neutral, and a ground. It probably was unnecessary to do all three, but I didn't want to leave anything to chance. And for my load, I will be using an electric heater set to the highest setting, which will consume around 1700 watts. Once the heater is turned on, I'll activate a timer, and at 20 minutes exactly, I will measure the amount of heat coming off each of the three connectors. Starting with the Wago, I'll connect each of the wires, making sure that I'm not getting any of the strands outside of the connector so that we can get a perfect result. At the 20 minute mark, our first connector is getting 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius. Our middle connector, which is likely our ground, is reading just 76 degrees Fahrenheit or 24 degrees Celsius. And our third connector is reading 98 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. Now we're going to test out the Pittsburgh connectors. Now to make this accurate, I allowed a one hour cooldown period, and I connected everything up exactly the same as the Wagos. On connection one, we're reading 112 degrees Fahrenheit or 44 degrees Celsius. Our ground connector is reading 75 degrees Fahrenheit or 24 degrees Celsius. And lastly, our third connector is reading 115 degrees Fahrenheit or 46 degrees Celsius. And here are the final results. The Wago connectors did conduct electricity better, running in at about 15 degrees cooler than the comparable Pittsburgh models. And after all the testing, I can confirm that the Wago connectors do a better job. They are more expensive, but they're smaller, lighter, and they will conduct electricity better and run cooler. But if cost is your number one concern, these Pittsburgh connectors are UL listed, as are the Wagos, and they certainly could be a good alternative if you want to save a little bit of money and make good, safe electrical connections. But the most important thing is these quick connectors are here to stay, and they do the job very well. I'd love to hear your comments below, and subscribe to the Silver Symbol channel if you're not already for more videos coming up.